A portion of this video was sponsored by Pronamel. So a few weeks ago, Subaru unveiled the next generation WRX. It looks like this. Take it all in. I'll give you a second. Within minutes of it being posted online, thousands of commenters made their opinions known, declaring it the ugliest WRX of all time. But is that true? And why does that argument sound so familiar? Today on Wheelhouse, we'll look at the WRX's past to see if the case can be made that this is actually the best looking WRX ever, and if the car was ever really good looking to begin with. I don't think so. I mean, that's the reason we made this episode. Thanks to Pronamel for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now, cars are fun, we know that, but adding boost to cars is even more fun. I wish somebody would add boost to boring old toothpaste. Whoa! Pronamel Mineral Boost Toothpaste? Now we're talking. Boost up your routine to keep enamel strong, protected, and bright with Pronamel Mineral Boost. This toothpaste has been developed to strengthen your enamel's absorption of calcium and phosphate, plus tested to protect your precious little teeth from acidic foods and drinks when you brush them just twice a day. Now, we all agree Boost is great, but what good is Boost without a cool vehicle in which to put it? No way! The all new Pronamel Enamel Protection Toothbrush? Unlike that generic one you've been using, the Pronamel Enamel Protection Toothbrush protects against overbrushing with DuoFlex technology for better cleaning and less pressure. So what happens when you put the two together? Boost up your dental routine and get Pronamel Mineral Boost Toothpaste anywhere you buy toothpaste. Or buy it now by clicking the link in the description. Thanks to Pronamel for sponsoring that portion of this video. From the very first Impreza WRX, to the strangely named Bug Eye, to the even more strangely named Blob Eye, to the kinda cool Hawkeye, all the way to the newer models, which for sure look better, but feel less like rally cars, the WRX has had a convoluted history. Our story begins way back in 1992, when Fuji Heavy Industries, AKA Subaru, took their legacy platform and chopped the wheelbase to create a compact car that would go on to take the rally world by storm. The new Impreza was a pretty standard compact car for the time, but the performance WRX trim, standing for World Rally Experimental, is what caught people's attention. Its rally-focused styling came with a hood scoop, aggressive fog lights, and a rear wing that transformed the look of the sedate Impreza into a mean, purposeful, industrial-looking beast that seemed designed from its very inception to win. And with all-wheel drive, a limited slip rear differential, and a turbocharged 2-liter engine putting out 237 horsepower, it made more power than the Mustang of the time with half the cylinders, earning the nickname Rex. Unfortunately, that was a race that rarely happened in real life, as we'd have to wait 10 more years before we'd see a WRX for sale in North America. Instead, we had to lust from afar as Colin McRae racked up World Rally Championship manufacturers titles year after year in 1995, 96, and 97. Meanwhile, Subaru did make concessions to American buyers, offering us the non-turbocharged Impreza 2.5 RS as a little bit of tease before we got the real WRX. Coming out in 1998, this RS looked like a WRX, even offering the same iconic blue and gold paint scheme, but the naturally aspirated engine's 165 horsepower just didn't get the job done in the same way. Thankfully though, us Yankees didn't have to settle for the RS for very long, as the second generation Bug Eye WRX finally made it to the new world in 2002. And the response was, uh, let's say, mixed. Does that sound familiar? Subaru deemed the design new age. Some people loved it, and some people thought it would literally bring the end to the world. It had a bold, surprised look that was a distinct departure from the Impreza it replaced. Some people described it as alien looking, which felt right in line with the Oakleys of the time, while others said the headlights were too reminiscent of a Dodge Neon. Personally, I really like the Bug Eye, but that might be out of nostalgia, not because it's pretty. While some people at the time hated those huge headlights out front, they absolutely loved what was hidden behind them. A turbocharged four-cylinder engine pumping out 227 horsepower and 217 foot-pounds of torque, numbers that were enough to send the little Rex to 60 in just 5.6 seconds and complete the quarter mile in 14.3. Never mind that it got 250 horsepower everywhere else, those numbers were enough to outperform the BMW 3 Series of the time, a fact that Subaru was eager to remind us of again and again. 
The bug eye only stuck around on American shores for three years before the aptly named Blob Eye WRX showed up as a facelift for the second generation WRX. The reaction to the bug eye was so strong that Subaru employed Peter Stevens to handle the new look, the same guy responsible for cars like the McLaren F1 and the Jaguar XJR15. Both great looking cars. The busier, more aggressive design aimed to update the looks of a model only a few years old at the time, with a more squared off headlight design, canards, and vents in the front fascia that forced air all over those brakes. Regardless, the blob eye again had a mixed reaction, with some claiming that function had finally won over form, while others deeming it the best looking WRX of all time. I don't really agree with that, but go off. Love it or hate it, the blob eye has the distinction of being the era when the STI finally made it to America. With 300 horsepower arriving at a screaming 6,000 RPM and a matching 300 foot-pounds of torque, the STI was finally on US soil. With its 4.87 second 0 to 60, it was a huge improvement over the regular WRX, though it would have been more impressive had the previous year's Evo not already bested that number for less money. But the STI brought with it a new aesthetic, thanks to its badging. Subaru Technica International, or STI, is Subaru's Skunk Works division, using the now familiar STI badging to designate the cars it worked on. Officially, the color for STI is Cherry Blossom Red, a color with deep meaning and importance in Japanese culture. Every year, the citizens of Japan wait through the dreary months of winter for the arrival of the cherry blossoms in spring. It's such an important part of their heritage that they often offer cherry trees to other nations as a sign of friendship. It's the reason why Washington, D.C. is covered in cherry trees today, thanks to a gift from Japan over 100 years ago. Unfortunately though, cherry blossom red is a bit too close to pink for American tastes, or at least Americans of 1994, and the pink badging caused its own controversy, quite stupidly, enough that Subaru had pushed the shade closer and closer to red ever since. Personally, I think the STI badges should be pink as hell, you know, because uh, pink is a color you don't really see very often in the car industry, and I don't really care if you think it's girly because like we're beyond that. All that aside, even the STI wasn't enough to say the blob eye. And by 2006, it was time for the WRX to get another facelift. This time around, Subaru turned to Andrea Sapatinas, chief designer at Centro Style Off Romeo to handle the job. And the result of this little partnership was the Hawkeye WRX, what Pumphrey affectionately refers to as the pig nose WRX. And do you think people finally agreed on whether or not it looked good? They did not. This aggressively angled front end was America's first look at the new corporate face of Subaru, featuring the unsurprisingly controversial, at this point, jet intake and wings grill design that was intended to pay homage to the company's aircraft manufacturing roots back when Fuji Heavy Industries was called Nakajima Aircraft Company and were constructing airplanes to fight in World War II, alongside with Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. By now, the Impreza was seven years into its second generation and another facelift wasn't gonna get the job done. It's at this point where we leave the bug eye, blob eye, hawk eye years. And despite the controversy, this has to be considered the most iconic era of one of the most celebrated cars of all time. They might not be the prettiest cars, but they are some of the coolest. Unfortunately, the third generation Impreza didn't offer much in way of relief from criticism. With a more bulbous, conventional design, the third generation Impreza arrived longer, wider, and heavier than the outgoing model, and gone with the frameless windows that had been iconically Subaru up to that point. Road and Track described the design as having, quote, looks of a running shoe and the personality of a tasseled loafer. That's rough. <laughs> it was immediately lambasted for being too soft, having too much compromise, and to no one's surprise, people didn't even get past the break-in period before they started predicting the demise of the WRX. Sounds familiar, right? To Subaru's credit, they addressed those concerns the following year, re-engineering the suspension to be more in line with the car's rally roots, with new springs and struts and a sway bar, better tires, blah, 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 but the damage had already been done. You only get one chance to make a first impression, and this one wasn't good. Things only got worse with the 2011 model, with the WRX getting the wide body shell that had previously only been enjoyed by the STI, leading to a fresh round of kinda deserved hate from the STI crowd. I mean, if I'm gonna spend thousands of extra dollars for a special trim, I'd prefer if the lower trim didn't look exactly the same as my car, right? And while the regular Impreza had by now moved on to its fourth generation, the WRX would continue on with the previous Impreza platform for a few more years, while Subaru developed an entirely separate platform for the WRX, 
or so they said. The new WRX actually arrived in 2014 on a modified version of the Impreza platforms called the VA, and this caused its own troubles. Back in 2012, Subaru had introduced the Crosstrek, known as the Subaru XV outside of North America. It was also built on a modified version of the Impreza platform. This new crossover wasn't a very flattering comparison, and people latched onto it as yet more evidence of the compromises that were sure to lead to the death of the WRX. But for the first time, the Impreza name was fully dropped from the marketing. The WRX was finally a nearly standalone model, now in its fresh first generation. But even as the WRX WRX was finally cementing its own identity, people were criticizing it for being a watered down version of itself. No longer a race ready rally car available at your local dealership, the WRX had become a sorry shadow of itself, killed by compromise excess and bloated by bowing to the whims and wallets of people who would never take the car off road, let alone race it. The time had come for a change, for a reclamation a return to the Rex's roots. And just when we thought there was no hope to hold on to, we were presented with this, the Subaru Visive concept. This is what everyone was waiting for. It was bold and futuristic and definitely uncompromised. It was a complete departure from the path that WRX had been trudging along for the past decade, and it was finally heading in the right direction. And better than that, we had good reason to believe the next WRX would be heavily influenced by the Visiv concept and become more of a driver's car again, thanks to articles like this, and this, and this, and perhaps this, and this. Instead, what we got was, <laughs> well, by now you already know what we got. How did we get from something as sexy as the Visiv concept to something as safe as this. With the 2022 model debuting on a new chassis, the Subaru Global Platform, it would seem there was plenty of opportunity to make the car exactly what we all wanted rather than needing to fit into a predetermined box. And yet, here we are, facing the same compromises that we seem to deal with in every WRX iteration. Too small of wheels, bulky lights, and a rear diffuser that looks like the car is hiking up its pants for an afternoon of clam digging. All the sexy lines and angles seem to have been smoothed over to produce what looks like a hybrid, no pun intended, between a WRX and a Crosstrek. And while I like both those cars, I don't think they go well together. Just as before, people are postulating that Subaru is setting their sights on an older audience, more interested in comfort than rally competence. And considering that the average age of a new car buyer is 55 years old, they might be right. But is it really due to the aesthetics alone? Or are we just dealing with an exceptionally passionate fan base that keeps getting disappointed? Internet designers have already taken a swing at improving things, and improve them they have, but the changes made are largely evolutionary rather than revolutionary. This is a game of inches where wheels are just a bit bigger, lights are just a bit more narrow, and lines are a bit sharper. That can't be all that separates something like the much-loved Visiv from the ugliest WRX ever. Can it? I think there's something else going on behind the madness here, and it has to do with expectations. It was widely speculated that we'd see 300 horsepower for the new WRX, and in reality, we got three. We are promised a return to the spirit of a car that punched way above its weight and price point. Instead, we got more of the same. The WRX used to be an economy car that Subaru turned into a rally car that was somewhat affordable. Now it's demanding sports car prices without really delivering on that promise. People wanted to own one because they saw Subaru out there killing it in the WRC and they wanted to take home their very own rally car. But Subaru hasn't won a manufacturer's championship since the 90s. And the last time they took home a driver's championship was 2003, just one year after the WRX finally made it to America. The economic downturn of 2008 saw them withdraw from WRC officially never to return. And while they're still bringing home wins on the US national rally circuit, the WRX was born and bred at the WRC. And we just haven't felt that heritage for far too many years. Now on top of that, we can look again at the Mustang comparison. In the last 20 years, the Mustang has gone from 260 to 460 horsepower, dropped a second off of its zero to 60 time, and almost two seconds off of its quarter mile time, while the WRX is putting up pretty much the same numbers as it did when it arrived on North American shores. Sure, the Mustang costs a bit more than the WRX now, but when it comes to performance, you're sure getting what you paid for. The true test of this new car will be the STI. I am holding out hope that this is where the new WRX will really shine, giving us back some of the angle and attitude that seems to have been lost in translation, along with some big, big horsepower numbers, even though it's really hard to make huge horsepower on boxer engines. But after all, 
If the Rex can't bring us a little attitude to the party, then why are we even here? It's been years, but the comment still haunts me. More hearse purrs? Was it even possible? How much horse is too much horse? I had to know. Test after test, Hello? failure after Eli. failure. I began to doubt that I'd ever find out. Then, it happened. I think I have it! I think I have it! I've done it. I've done it. Hearse purrs are infinite. So saddle up boys and girls and hit the trails with this 100% scientifically accurate new Hearse Purrs shirt available right now at DonutMedia.com and it features everything that you need to know about pure equine muscle. Now a real horse, that'll cost you thousands of dollars. But this pony is $29.98, which is way less than $30. Go ask your mathematician uncle. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this video and your thoughts on the new WRX. The STI is make or break for that car, really. It looks like a hiking shoe. It looks like a Merrill. You don't want your cars to look like shoes. I still want a WRX, despite all that. All right, Jeremiah just started up his car, so I gotta go, because it's loud. Be kind, see you next time. I love you. Wait, I, what? That's not my line. <laughs>